swords are weak. Let me explain why. Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So um, apologies to those of you who know this only too well, okay? So anyone engaged in HEMA, probably most people engaged in things like uh, kind of Battle of the Nations type stuff or even reenactment to some degree, although that's a bit different for reasons I'll explain. Um, but swords are really, really weak. Now this is contrary to what uh, people kind of think, I, I guess, from watching movies or uh, reading uh, graphic novels or, you know, fantasy books or whatever. Um, now, the simple fact is, this is a force magnifier. Yes, it's a lever. It has inertia. So absolutely, hitting someone with an object generally is going to confer more energy to the target than just punching them with your fist, for example, okay? Um, so yeah, absolutely, you can increase the amount of energy you put into the target by adding extra things to this. So this has a mass and it has a velocity, um, and depending on where the point of balance is, it has a certain amount of rotational inertia as well, so all the physics, which I'm not gonna go deeply into. But the way that you step, the way that you move, the way that you twist your hips, the way that you twist your shoulder, your body mechanics, in other words, also has a big um, effect on that. So for example, whether whether it's a, uh, my uh, right foot's back, if I'm stepping through, I'm adding my body weight and my velocity of my body to the velocity of the sword, um, to the uh, energy of the blow, the energy that's conferred to the target. Equally, uh, if I was thrusting, for example, if I'm lunging with it, uh, so lunging out with the lead foot, then that also adds a lot of um, energy to the target and makes for a much more effective thrust, a much more damaging blow. But, Swords are only yay long, okay? Some swords are bigger and heavier, okay? Now, if I uh, switch over to probably, well, definitely the most popular and common type of Hema sword out there, uh, which is a long sword, this is the practice version, the uh, Feder or Fedeschwert version of it. This, generally speaking, does confer more energy to the target. It does, in other words, hits harder uh, than a one-handed sword does or a smaller or lighter sword does. Okay, there are a number of reasons for that. Number one, it is a bigger, heavier sword. So we're talking about mass here. But in addition to that, it is also longer. By being longer, that means that the end of the blade is traveling at a higher velocity, potentially, because it's longer. Uh, but in addition, you've got two hands on it as well. So not only uh, do you, does the, is the thing longer and traveling faster, but part of that is because you have this added lever you have twice as many arms attached to the back end of the weapon uh, powering it uh, so you can apply more muscle essentially. Also there's some difference of body mechanics as well in the way that you apply your, uh, your mass and your movement to the weapon. So the general rule is that two-handed swords hit with more uh, energy or more force, if you want to call it that, um, than a one-handed sword, although uh, tests have shown that one-handed swords do actually kind of punch above their weight, as, they, as it were, and there's a number of reasons for that. One is the way that one arm is able to um, extend and operate unimpeded by another arm. Two arms can create an internal friction in the system, uh, which can actually not just double the amount of energy put in, it increases the amount of energy that you get out, but it doesn't, doesn't necessarily double it. Um, there's other things to do with reach as well, the fact that a one-handed sword can reach further away from your body because it's attached to one side of your body. If you want to attach the other side of your body to the weapon, you have to bring that shoulder forward. So it's a complicated uh, topic. And that's not the point of this video. But the basic rule is that yes, larger, longer swords hit harder. Now, why am I saying that swords are weak? Well, that's because in the world of medieval weapons, the most important weapons really that we have to look at if we're looking at warfare are missile weapons and pole weapons, okay? So I'm always singing the praises of spears, uh, but if I grab a different type of pole weapon here, which is a bill, okay? Now this could be a halberd or it could be a pole axe or a partisan or a gisam or a fauchard or whatever. It could be any number of pole weapons. But when these hit, these hit with such a colossal amount of energy for the two main reasons that it's equivalent in the way that we're holding it to a two-handed sword, okay, or a long sword, but it is longer and heavier, not just a bit, 
but quite a lot. Um, but the main point here, apart from the weight, actually, although the mass is, is important because the mass of things like halberds and pole axes, they might be, say, seven pounds or eight pounds in weight compared to a four or five pound um, longsword or three pound longsword. So they are sort of double the mass, uh, but it's leverage as well, it's length. Um, if I just grab the uh, axe here, uh, the the amount of uh, leverage that I'm, or rather the amount of, uh, yeah, the amount of leverage that I'm getting at the tip of this weapon means a, a large amount of acceleration because, of course, I'm at the back end of this and the hitting end is far away from me. But moreover, separate mass and uh, velocity here, which are two obviously very, very important things. It is both a heavier weapon and a longer weapon, although in the case of this Danax, this is about the same weight as a heavy longsword. But moreover, <laughs> with these weapons, where is the mass? Okay, now we get into the world of inertia, and inertia is, I think, often overlooked, and it's so important. It's why things like axes and maces and warhammers are so effective against armour when swords really aren't. Okay, and that is because their mass, which is greater than a sword in some cases, is their total mass, a lot of their mass, a high percentage of their mass, is at the end. Okay, so if you look at the balance point on this axe, it's there. Okay, it's, it's about, what, 18 inches from the tip. Sorry I use Imperial, but that's what um, I'm used to using. Um, so it's about 18 inches from the hitting end. That means if that's the centre of mass and I'm swinging this weapon at something, the centre of mass is very close to uh, the thing that I'm hitting, whereas a sword, the centre of mass, is way back by the hand. It's far, far away from the point at which I'm hitting someone with. Now, there is a practical outcome to the fact that pole arms, because of mass, because of length, because of where the mass is located resulting in inertia, there is an end result, and that end result in HEMA, for example, where we hit each other pretty much at full whack. Okay, now, not to say that we don't exercise control. Of course, we do exercise control, and this is where reenactment comes into it. So depending what type of reenactment you do, your experience may be, uh, may be different or may be more similar to what I'm talking about. In the majority of UK reenactment, People use what are called pulled blows. That is, if they're hitting someone with a sword, they kind of stop the blow on the target. Okay, they're not aiming to cut through a person and hit them hard. Okay, obviously, it, with thrusts in UK reenactment, thrusts are sometimes just not allowed at all, or if they are allowed, they're allowed only to a certain target, and they have to also be pulled. In HEMA, in contrary, if we're using something like long swords, what, what we do is we use a Fedeschwert, which is a modified version of the sword which brings the inertia back towards the hand. It's got a narrowed blade which doesn't hit so hard as a full width, uh, historically accurate long sword. Um, and it's a flexible blade, so it's safe in the thrust with a blunt tip. Okay? And we wear lots of protective gear, so we wear fencing masks, we wear padded jackets chest protectors, all kinds of extra stuff, so that when we're actually fencing, we might not always strike with 100% of the force that we could, because very often that's not what you're able to do in the moment in fencing. Very often you just hit the person as best you can in the, um, with the opportunity that presents itself. But we do basically hit each other pretty damn hard, as hard as you would in a real fight. Um, now we can do that with swords, but we can't do that with pole weapons. There is no way on earth that we could make a blunt Danax and use the same amount of force, the same amount of uh, conviction, if you want to call it that. Some people would say intent, but I'm not very keen on that word because it's just laden with BS, basically. Um, but with the same amount of, uh, of gusto, shall we call it, there's no way on earth we could make blunt Danaxes in HEMA and spar with them to the same liberty that we do with long swords or one-handed swords, sabers, rapiers, whatever. Okay, the fact is that, say, uh, that swords are weak <laughs> and that enables us, so they function by their sharpness. If they're blunt, they're not very effective weapons anymore. If you want to hit someone with a blunt instrument, don't use a blunt sword. It's just a relatively thin bar of metal. Yeah, it will hurt them. Is it as effective as a hammer? 
No. Is it as effective as a baseball bat? Probably not. Is it as effective as a mace or a warhammer or an axe? Definitely not. The fact is, those weapons have inertia all at the tip. Swords have inertia down by the hands. So, or have mass, rather, a central balance down by the hands. So the fact is that in HEMA, there's no way on earth we can spar safely with a metal blunted, with a steel blunted Danax or um, a Bill or, or GSAM or Polax or anything like that. When we spar with these weapons, we're basically faced with two options. We either modify the weapon to turn it into a one with a rubber head or some kind of padded head or something like this, maybe make it a lot lighter as well so it hits with less energy, or we or and both, we wear even more protective gear um, and we use more control. Um, so say for example, even if we're using a quarter staff, which actually has no metal on it at all, if you hit someone in a fencing mask full force with a, with a uh, quarter staff, there's a large chance you'll give them a neck injury or just knock them out or you know, smash in the front of the fencing mask or whatever. The fact is that pole arms hit with so much energy um, and, and thrusts as well. This applies to thrusts um, because the hands are far apart. So um, there's no flex, uh, unlike the steel blades with the uh, feathers, for example. When you thrust someone, the blade flexes, and that's one of the main things that takes energy out of the thrust. The problem with a pole arm, especially if it has a rigid ash shaft like this, it's not going to flex, and you've got two hands making it very, very um, sort of rigid, essentially, and unyielding uh, in a straight line towards the target. So when we do spear sparring, which we do uh, do relatively often, actually, we use both a padded, uh, well, rubber spearhead, and we use a rattan pole instead of an ash pole, because ash, well, ash does flex a bit, it's pretty rigid, uh, rattan flexes quite a lot, so it's rigid enough to use for technique, it's not perfect, but it flexes when you stab someone in the face with it. Uh, we used to use ash spear shafts with rubber heads or padded heads, and people were, you know, it was just nearly knocking people out. It was smashing the fencing mask into their face, hurting their necks, um, all sorts of, you know, potentially concussion, all sorts of bad things. So we had to use flexible shafts. So. Swords are weak, and that is, that is my explanation why. I've given the, you the physics explanation of why swords are weak compared to pole arms, but also I've given you the practical explanation of what that means for us. It means that basically, without full plate armor and a lot of control and modified pole axes, most of the people who fight with pole axes use, um, in full plate armor in a HEMA context, use hard rubber heads instead of steel heads on the pole axes, and they still use some degree of control as well, even in full plate armour, because you hit someone in the head full, uh, full force with something, something like a Danax or a Polax. If, it doesn't matter if someone is wearing full plate harness and they've got a, the best quality Salé, a Helmschmied uh, Salé or whatever. If you manage to get a full force, full extension uh, smash into their helmet with a two-handed axe, there's a very good chance they are going down like a sack of potatoes. And this is literally a technique described in the treatises explicitly in Fury Delivery. He says you hit the guy in the uh, head with the pole axe a um, couple of times, and if he doesn't go down, then you go to wrestling. Um, so pole arms are incredibly powerful compared to swords, and swords, as striking instruments at least, are weak. They rely on their sharpness and their pointiness. You make them blunt, they're not very effective weapons anymore. Hope this is thought-provoking, useful and interesting. Please subscribe if you haven't done already and I'll see you really soon for another video. Cheers folks!